The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has said that wearing of face masks will be made compulsory for residents in the state from next week. The governor said this would help to curb the spread of coronavirus in the state. He made this known on Monday during a televised media briefing on COVID-19 updates in Lagos. According to him, more than one million face masks will be distributed in the state. And we are now joined via Skype by Dr. Lawson Babajide. Good morning, Dr. Babajide. Good morning, Amaka. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, and good to have you. Uh, in your opinion, is the plan to make the use of face mask mandatory and forcible? Well, um, the use of face masks at this point in time is actually aimed at um, helping to control spread. Um, will it be enforceable? There will be a need to educate, inform, make available masks, and at the same time um, put in place uh, machinery to ensure that people abide by, by, by this uh, government um, instruction. All right. Um, Lagos State is about 20 million and counting, if uh, the statistics is anything to go by. Now, how concerned are you that the governor is talking about 1 million masks, when that wouldn't, uh, of course, as you do know, be able to cover much of the population? 19, uh, 19, we are left with 19 million others. What will happen? Um, if the way the private sector and um, the government's uh, parastatals, uh, private individuals have responded. If that is any way to go by, then there will be um, people that will take up and fill that gap. Because in this particular condition, these are extraordinary times, and you do not, ex you do not think that um, the government will be able to do everything by itself. Resources are stretched. There's need for provision of PPEs. You need ventilators. Oil prices are down, so your general um, your your revenue is also down. Um, so the economy uh, it has taken a major blow. So you need to put things in proper perspective, and that's a point to start from, and then you can actually scale up. So you do know the cases, uh, uh, part of the reasons why we saw a, a rise in the cases in Lagos is because most of it were imported. In the first case, at least, was imported. Now, and there are people who have traveled, you know, in and out of the country. Now, do you see a follow through with the threat to prosecute those who lie about their travel history? And do you support it? Mm. Okay, for, 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 first of all, this is um, a very infectious condition. And as much as possible, patients or uh, individuals that have come in contact with um, uh, people that do have this condition need to be upfront because they risk putting um, healthcare providers and the community at large at risk. Now, the funny thing or the, the problem is that um, for the infected person who may also be asymptomatic, whoever comes in contact could get infected. The asymptomatic person may recover and then the person that gets infected as a consequence of coming in contact with this may now progress to have serious disease. Now, communication, if information education is very, very important in managing any medical condition. Now, um, would criminalizing, not providing this information uh, be advisable? I do not think so. Um, because at this point in time, you do not want to alienate people. What you're trying to do is to make them see reason and understand why this information needs to be made available. Now, it, besides, that will not be the only um, direction that you would use to also uh, control this. Things like um, travel history, following up, contact tracing, amongst other things, would make a better approach, in my opinion. Now, um, if people, now, that would be different from uh, people now violating the lockdown, in which case um, you could, um, there are laws in place to ensure that you enforce, because it's a form of enforcing social distancing.
So if you say you want to criminalize people violating the lockdown, that makes more sense. All right, talking about the lockdown, if you look around Lagos, it looks like, it seems like the, the lockdown is gradually phasing out. Have we come to a point where we look like, where it feels like we are now comfortable and not vulnerable again to the virus? Well, um, you, you do need to understand that um, the lockdown changes the whole fabric of society. People who used to go out to make a living, people who used to interact with family and friends have been asked to stay at home. Um, the first two weeks, yes, the next two weeks, an additional um, experience that a lot of people are very, very unfamiliar with. Coping mechanisms, there have been reports in increase of um, uh, violence, in sexual violence, etc. That the possibility of people that were going, um, that stopped drinking, have started uh, drinking again, taking up different coping mechanisms, just in a bit to be able to handle the fact that this is not what we're all used to. So the lockdown would have its own effects on people. Now, enforcing the lockdown is also going to be difficult if the government hasn't anticipated the problems that may come from this. So keeping people at home, um, providing um, relief materials to ensure, reassuring people, um, talking with them regularly, information, education, communication, letting them know that they are not alone and this is a battle that we are winning, will go a long way in helping people to understand the need to want to work with the government to control this. After all, we are all in this together. This is a battle that we are winning. Dr. Jide Lawson, keep safe and thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.